Hello and welcome to the in-news series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Divedi and in this segment today we are going to discuss in brief about the sixth mass extinction. Very importantly, we have to know the factual information from the perspective of preliminary examination and from the perspective of mains, the analysis part. So, let's begin. These are the main topics that we are going to discuss. Of course, what is mass extinction? We have to know that from the perspective of prelims as well as mains. Then, has the earth witnessed mass extinctions before? Of course, we will talk about the five earlier mass extinctions over here. Certain preliminary facts are very important. Then, about what is the sixth mass extinction? Uh, basically, the indications with respect to it and the possible implication and can we go back? These are basically important from the perspective of mains and prelims both. GS mains paper 3. Okay. So, uh, before we begin, I would like to answer this question which I asked in the last um, segment, which was with respect to eco-sensitive zones. Consider the following statements. The term eco-sensitive zone is mentioned in the Environment Protection Act and also Wildlife Protection Act. So, first statement is downright incorrect because I have told you time and again in the last segment that the term has not been used anywhere. The concept of it is in certain rules and clauses of Environmental Protection Act that I have discussed and it is not mentioned as eco-sensitive zone anywhere, not in the Wildlife Protection Act or the Environment Protection Act. Secondly, widening of roads and commercial mining is completely banned. Now, widening of roads is regulated but commercial mining is completely prohibited. That makes the second statement also incorrect. So, all of you, almost all of you, whoever have answered, have answered it correctly neither one nor two. Now, if I talk about who have answered it the earliest, okay, I have the names that Puneet Sharma was the earliest person who to answer this question, which is correct. And also Ankush Mohanty answered it correctly. And uh, many other such as Priya Sethi have answered it correctly. Koyal has answered it correctly. So, many of you have answered it correctly. Vaishnavi ji and also Nishant has answered it correctly. Will Carson has answered it correctly. Dinesh has also answered it correctly. Umesh Kumar has answered it correctly. Hira Singh has answered it correctly and many others. So, try to answer it as quick as possible. Okay. For the next segment, I have also introduced one question with respect to the coming upcoming segment. So, what is the news? Now, here we will talk an art, about an article that was in the down to earth with respect to the sixth mass extinction. It is kind of a narration, but what the crux was it, uh, of it was that several reports have come up since the since a long period of time which has talked about the sixth mass extinction which is also known as holocene mass extinction or anthropocene mass extinction okay we will know about that so what is mass extinction basically mass extinction is something uh, one one thing that we should know is extinction and evolution these two processes are very natural in our ecosystem once a species is uh, supposedly is not having a role that it used to have earlier, it will be rendered useless by the nature and then it will become extinct. For taking place of that extinct species, a new species will have the evolution process so that it can perform better than it was performing in the earlier days of its existence. So, it is a natural process. The problem is, when the species vanish much faster than they are replaced. That is the problem over here. So, extinction is like suppose we are talking about birth rate and death rate. Death, uh, death rate is increasing, birth rate is not increasing as fast. Then 75%, what is mass extinction? It is being defined as 75% of the world species being lost in a short amount of geological time. This geological time is 2.8 million years, okay? So, remember this fact for prelims. Now, this is mass extinction. What is mass extinction? If we talk about has the earth ever experienced mass extinction? Five times, yes. Ordovician mass extinction or the first mass extinction, it happened 445 million years ago and wiped out 85% of all species. Then comes Devonian mass extinction, the second one. About 375 million years ago, 75% of the world species were lost. Then the Permian mass extinction, which happened 250 million years ago, 
that 95% of all these species were extinct. Now, this Permian mass extinction is known as the Great Dying as well. Another important fact for prelims Great Dying, Permian mass extinction or the third mass extinction. Then we have Triassic mass extinction. 200 million years ago, it wiped out 80% of the Earth species, including certain dinosaurs. Then Cretaceous mass extinction happened 65 million years ago. The non avian, the non avian species, of the dinosaurs were extinct in Cretaceous mass extinction. Now, if we talk about the current sixth mass extinction, it is being said that it is the most dangerous of all the mass extinctions that have taken place. This is called Anthropocene mass extinction because it is being exacerbated by humans. Humans are exploiting the nature at such a fast rate that the ecosystem or the nature is not getting time to replenish itself. So, this is what the red one is expected and what has been observed in terms of mass extinction. You can see the gap is huge in terms of mammal. Only 1.26 were expected to be wiped out if anthropocene or anthropogenic mass extinction was not there. And now it has become 35%. For birds, it's such a huge gap, 57. Reptiles, 8. Amphibians, 32. And fishes, 66. So you can see marine ecosystem as well as the atmospheric ecosystem, everything is getting impacted. And here the worry is that how, because this is going to be permanent in nature, the main worry is that we cannot bring back what we have lost, the species which are playing a huge part in our ecosystem. Moving on, if we talk about dragonflies, dragonflies last December only by the IUCN, it was said that 16% of approximately 6,000 dragonflies are endangered. These are going to be extinct very soon. Very importantly, these dragonflies and damselflies are pollinators. They play a very, they might be very small, but they play a huge and important part into the food chain. And also, if I talk about the other things, the Global Assessment Report on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Service, this was the first kind of report by the Prelims, Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services. Now, it said that 1 million animal and plant species face extinction and thousands of these would become extinct within decades. IUCN has also said, International Union for Conservation of Nature, that more than 1,42,500 species are facing the threat of extinction, that is 28 percent of uh, more than 1 lakh 40,000 species are on the verge of extinction and that includes dragonflies, that includes many other small but ex extensively important species. Also, this is for the first time ever that more than 40,000 species are endangered in the IUCN, right? IUCN prepares a red list in which different species or different animals are categorized as threatened, near threatened, endangered, critically endangered, extinct, vulnerable. Okay, that is also another problem. Now, according to this report, about 40% of the planet's amphibian species are threatened with extinction. Since 1900, the number of native species in most of the land-based habitat has declined by 20% because of biodiversity loss and the loss of their homes. Then, Pacific Biosciences Research Center, the Hawaii University, University of Hawaii has said that since the year 1500, Earth could already have lost between 7.5 and 13 percent of the 2 million known species on Earth, a staggering 1,50,000 to 2,60,000 species. Living Planet Report, which is published by World Wildlife Fund since 1998, again important for prelims, has said that Asia Pacific region lost 45% of its vertebrate population in four and a half decades, while the average global loss is 68%. And the data has been aggregated since 1970 to 2016. This set is presenting us this report. Moving on, it also said that loss of vertebrate population was the highest in the Caribbean, very important for prelims. And Latin America, 94%. For Africa, it's 65%. And Europe and Central Asia showing the least loss of 24% preliminary facts. Moving on, if we talk about India's scenario, this could give us a little insight about it. 
the loss could be higher than the global average in India. The global average is being exceeded by India, 12% of its wild animal. India has lost 19% of its amphibians, 3% of its bird over the past five decades. And of about 0 0.1 million animal species, about 6,800 are vertebrates. 550 fall in the critically endangered category, endangered category and vulnerable category. So this is the scenario of India. Now for prelims, let's look at this question. You will be able to answer this question with the help of this segment only. 13 to 30, which is an initiative aimed at land conservation, belongs to which of the following countries? China, USA, India or UK? Answer it correctly in the comment segment as fast as possible. What is the possible implication of the ongoing scenario? First, a loss of species will be permanent. That is the biggest fear that is coming to life. If we lose these species permanently, there are two things that we are going to lose. First, the food chain will be drastically impacted because food chain goes like this is the plant and this is the, suppose this is an animal which is a herbivore, then a carnivore, then omnivore, then human being. If one of these species gets lost, what about this one, right? And then the entire food system will collapse. Second problem is the emergence of zoonotic disease. So as many, if we are going to have many species in the food chain, this is the zoonotic disease. Now this is the human being. Zoonotic disease will go through many species and might be kept checked with the help of biodiversity and not reach the human being. But if many of the species will get lost, the chain will become smaller. Now, this zoonotic disease will have a much better chance of spilling over to human beings. That is the second thing. So, a loss in crop pollination and water purification. Crop pollination, dragonflies, bees, these are birds. These are very important animals that help us in having crop pollination for food security. That will get lost. It will impact the food chain and will worsen the genetic and cultural variability, which could change the entire ecosystem. New pathogens could arise which any uh, even if we talk about animals the bodies cannot understand the uh, the working of the new strains and then can collapse so this is something very very fear fearsome we have to be fearful of this fact can we go back we can we cannot bring back the species but we can conserve what we have right now first changes these are the important things that the uh, living planet report has said that why we are losing our species changes in land and sea use because of that habitat loss is occurring and degradation. We over exploit our species to meet the needs. Actually the greeds now, when need is replaced with greed then only over exploitation takes place. Invasive species, many species are being interchanged from one place to another which is actually changing the entire demography of, of that place. So the entire ecosystem starts to get disturbed and distraught such as water hyacinth, lantana. Now lantana is also known as Tell me in the comment segment. And water hyacinth is known as terror of Bengal. Remember that that is an invasive species. Diseases, as I told you, zoonotic diseases. Pollution and climate change. And also, the role of pollution and climate change was proportionately higher at 16%. Prelims fact. Moving on. Now we talk about going back. First is Paris Agreement. If we dedicate ourselves to having the emission rate at keeping the global temperature below 1.5 degrees Celsius and 2 degrees Celsius, we can at least not exacerbate the rate at which species are dying. Secondly, 13 to 30 initiative, which is an initiative of the USA. Okay, it is an initiative of the USA to conserve 30% of land and water of US by the year 2030. That is why it is known as 13 to 30. Build back better to invest in cleaner and greener energy and UN Biodiversity Summits, these have to be taken seriously. Then grassroots initiatives, if we can involve the community, community participation is a must when we talk about species conservation, we have to take a down to top approach here, not top to down. Okay, let's move on to our main space question. With respect to the ongoing sixth mass extinction, discuss how we can undo the human induced mass extinction in 250 words. So that's it for the day tomorrow. We shall meet again with another segment. Until then, stay updated and thank you so much for watching.